the calypso opens with a deep, uh, lugubrious roll on a D in the bass, seeming to symbolize the depths of the ocean, followed by a flash of sparkling sound. It's a kind of Polish scarbo, like a scarbo from Ravel, which seems to return all the time, the sort of uh, flickering <coughs> passage-like material. So amidst the polytonal harmonic resonance, there's a motive in the middle ground texture. Uh, this can be the, we can interpret this as the call of Calypso for Odysseus. Right there. And it happens a few times, one's going down. And after that, what follows is another one of those empirical passages uh, the white and black note combinations between the two hands, this time descending in a, in a flurry, bobbing down the keyboard. And it brings in uh, the principal motive we can see the principal motives, they tend to come in a little bit later in general. But so this is a versus, a nice 6 8 rocking meter. I'm not getting my triplets wrong. And so this uh, is a bitonal fusion of D minor, D sharp minor, uh, D sharp major. Sorry. Actually, there's a B on top, so it's major minor. And that's another interesting thing here. He likes to do that. He's always shifting. The major minor, major minor functionality is always going all over the place. And we can see that here, too, with the E sharp going to the F sharp. So there's already a change from major to minor to major at the first moment there. happens after the after this there's some transitional moments which lead to a series of themes and um, <coughs> they're linked together by these tatters of, of, of little rhythmic points and so the second stage of intensity in Calypso is probably at this point and it arrives to this theme here Scriabinesque, as I mentioned, he's also using the A flat D pivot points as he had used in the Ile des Sirènes. So that's also interesting that he brings them back here to support this secondary thematic uh, zone. And the third important motive is uh, reminiscent of Straussian dec decadence, and it's uh, also very easily harmonizable. harmonizable. down to C on the bass. And there's a transition, and this transition ushers in the development here. And the development is now over top of the A. The Versus theme over top of the A pedal point, with the B sharp going to C sharp in the bass. quite richly uh, bitonal there throughout and the bass points go down <laughs> bringing in that flight it's a little bit of a bucket of sound there sometimes it's hard to you have to really pinpoint the bass to make sure you get the extremes isolated from that harmonic opulence and then after that final flash uh, he brings in the 
the flurry of the which leads into this final arrival of the Beresu's theme, which is a sort of recapitulation. If I take it from there. So he's going into the F sharp with more uh, intensity here. The E sharp there, going into the F sharp there, and then it keeps moving. And then he even brings in the subdominant here. The B flat going to the B natural. So he's really moving this theme a little bit more than usual. which funnels in a magical transi transition restatement of the, the other thematic zone, uh, which also uh, gives him a sort of a modified sonata structure after he brings in again the, <laughs> the Straussian theme and linking it through a circle of fifths. And the piece ends really beautiful with uh, uh, a really open keyboard. So um, the sound is just really marvelous as it unlocks in the final measures there. It's on the A major chord, which is very interesting. I don't have it there. So finally the A takes over from the D at the pedal point.